Good morning, everybody. Welcome. I think everything for the moment is cooperating. I appreciate your patience with me. Like I said, um, technology felt the need to update um, last night and then proceeded to um, not everything wants to cooperate. So just bear with me this morning, but we will get through it with making our like to party apron. And there's no better way to party than when everything doesn't work. <laughs> so this morning we are working on the September Dealer Digital Design Exclusive, which features the I Like to Party apron, um, or it can be a on anything. You could put it on a dish towel. You could put it on whatever you'd like. You could even leave that background gray piece off and just stitch the words. There's a little sewing machine um, that's there. It doesn't have to be the entire design. We are working with the um, large oval hoop. So in the world of Bernina, that is our large oval. Okay, we need a five by seven field. Good morning, everybody. Um, we need a five by seven field, which this design fits into our um, large oval. We are going to be using Aqua Mesh Plus in the hoop. So in the hoop, I have loaded a piece of basically sticky wash away is what we are using today. So I have loaded it in the hoop with the paper side up and then we're going to score through the middle just enough to perforate the paper, okay, so that we can peel the paper off to expose the adhesive. Okay. You don't want to get too aggressive and poke too far. don't get all the way to the corners it's not that big of a deal because we're mainly focused here in the center you will need your apron if you are using um, the apron they show the apron um, the design on the pinstriped apron you could use the solid apron or you could be applying this to whatever you would like we need two pieces of fabric two little scraps really more than anything the two fabrics that are shown in the image, if you want to make it identical, is the gray with the little white dot is used for the back ground, and that is six by eight. And then you need a small scrap of her solid, which I believe she, this is Ice Castle, and that is about two and a half by three and a half. On the back side of each of these fabrics, you are going to iron a piece of fusible interfacing, okay? So this is fusible woven lining from OESD, okay? And we're just going to apply it to the back of each of those fabrics. More along the lines of why people ask, why do we do this uh, ironing of this fusible? One, it gives you a little bit more body to your fabric, so this kind of acts like one layer of stabilizer. And the other good thing that Fusible Woven does is kind of acts as a color barrier. Because this ice castle is, um, this solid is fairly light, um, if I were to place this over top of this gray without the Fusible Woven, it is possible that I would be able to see the um, polka dots and the gray kind of shadowing through that fabric so kind of acts as a color barrier we are going to go ahead on the machine and we're going to open up the crosshairs so let's so over on the machine we're going to open up the uh, Kimberbell 4x4 crosshairs and we're going to go ahead and stitch that directly into our hoop okay so in my hoop I have, again, the Aquamesh Plus, that's the sticky wash away. I have threaded my machine with the dark gray. 
you may ask, well, why did you thread it with that one? Well, I always look at, and I got a twist in my thread here. I always look at what is the first really functional color of our design. So, and I go ahead and thread the machine. This crosshair isn't going to be seen. It doesn't matter what color it is, but why thread your machine unnecessary um, and extra time if you don't need to. So for me, after we get our apron in place, the first thing that really counts is going to be the base of the sewing machine, which for me is going to be this dark gray. I am using Isocord 138, and I'm gonna try to tell you what color Isocord I've chosen for everything today. If I forget, just ask me in the comments and I'll gladly tell you again, or tell you the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my crosshairs directly into the stabilizer. And while that's stitching, we're going to come on over to the iron or the machine, uh, the cutting table, and we're gonna do some marking and pressing on our apron. So we're gonna fold our apron in half I like to do it right sides together. I'm not really stressing over matching too much, but I've matched the top here. I'm gonna crease here down the side, and then we need to measure five inches down from the top and either mark the line or iron it. And I'm actually gonna, I actually ironed it. And so what I do is I, it's a great place for a hot hammer, and I sold all the hot hammers, and so I don't have any at the moment, but pretend this is a hot hammer. So if I laid my hot hammer here, I want to fold this over until the end of my apron lines up with five inches. And then I would iron right on top of that hot hammer, okay? And give it a really good press so that you have a nice visible crease that you can see, okay? Now, once the design is, um, the crosshairs are stitched, I'm gonna go ahead and add to the design the patch, okay? And the reason for that is I wanna see how it is oriented in the hoop so that I can make sure that I put my apron on in the correct direction, okay? So that, by looking at that, it means the top of my apron needs to go on the right hand of my hoop and the rest of my apron should hang off to the left hand side of the hoop. Okay, so here's my crosshairs. I'm going to take my apron. The neck of my apron is going here. These are the clamps. I am going to line up. Here's my ironed vertical crease and then you can see my horizontal crease that I am going to align with those marks. Okay. Just like that. Then I'm going to open this up. Now, if you do not have pinpoint or a machine with pinpoint placement, um, what I would probably do is to try to line um, the, one of the stripes up with the line, at least this direction, so that you can try to get yourself straight. You can also use your um, plastic grid template to also make sure that you're straight. But I'm going to, we're going to pinpoint this uh, design here in the hoop so that I can make sure that I, this, this stripe is straight all the way from left to right. Although I think it's pretty straight, okay. So what we're going to do now is after you have your apron in the hoop, we need to make sure that we secure the rest of the apron so that the neck straps, the waist ties, and all of that doesn't end up getting embroidered on or embroidered over, okay? So you can just roll it up and a couple of pins, use some of the larger wonder clips, 
completely your choice, but just pin it up and out of the way. You definitely want to also make sure that you pay attention to the neck straps. Okay, so those neck straps like to hide out over underneath the um, right hand side of the hoop here. So you want to make sure that you can either get them in a place that you can see them, that they're visible. Um, I'm actually going to take it and kind of pin it. This short one here, I'm just going to kind of pin to the apron. There, just so. Maybe if that pin does not throw that pin on the floor, I'm telling you it's the Mondayest of Tuesdays ever. Okay, pin that one there. This one on this end. I'm just going to kind of roll up here. So I've got it kind of rolled. I'm just going to wonder clip it to the corner of my stabilizer. I'm going to pin it because the wonder clips have disappeared from my studio. <laughs> oh, managing too many sewing locations is challenging. We are now going to go ahead and we're going to start the first design. So the first part of the design is we're going to place our um, fabric, our background fabric, or our label fabric as they refer to it. So we're going to stitch the placement line. We're then going to place that gray with the polka dot, um, right side up covering all of that placement line, and then we're going to tack it down. The thing to remember here is we are not trimming this. Do not trim this fabric until after all the embroidery is finished and we are prompted to, okay? We wanna hold on to this excess fabric hanging out the side while the machine is stitching all on the inside because if we trim it, and then get really close. As we put all that embroidery in here, it can kind of shrink it, and then it won't be caught in your uh, tack down. And then I told you I was gonna pinpoint it, and then I didn't do that. <laughs> I swear. It's gonna be a day. So, I will walk you through pinpointing. So give me one second here. We're gonna go over to the simulator. So once you have your apron on the machine, we're going to open up pinpoint. So we're going to touch the eye on the screen and we're going to open up the pinpoint setting, which is right here on the right hand side, just below the rotate function. And I'm going to use the two points. I'm going to use the grid function of pinpoint because I want to use a, um, well, this would be a horizontal line uh, for our pinpoint. And I'm going to use the horizontal in uh, center. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the center point. That center point is going to move to the center point of our design. Let me switch back here. Okay, so I hit the center point and the center point moved to center of design. That is, I want that to be right at the center of where my horizontal and vertical creases align, okay? And so that is pretty good right where I'm at, okay? Once I've, if I need to move it, I am going to use the left and right and the up and down. So you would use your stitch width and stitch length knobs to move in left and right or up and down until that needle goes into the middle crosshair. Then what we're gonna do and again, I'm kind of also just using, because I'm really close to a stripe, 
in the center of the apron, you may be able to just use one of the stripes. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to hit the word set. Okay, so think of every time you hit set, we just basically put a push pin and we just nailed the center of the design down. Now, any changes that we make are going to change, but it's not going to move center. It's now going to rotate the design around that point of center. So whatever point you set, that point is no longer movable, if that makes sense. I'm then going to choose one of either the left dot or the right point. I'm going to choose the right hand point. One second, let me. There's my right hand point. And I'm going to make sure that it lines up with that. So let me move this screen out of the way so you can kind of see a little bit better. I made sure that my center sat right in the middle or right on the line. So it sits right on that faintly uh, printed line in the apron. Okay, now when I moved up and chose the other point, I want to make sure that needle goes down exactly on that line. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that when I drop this, that that point lines up directly on that printed line in the apron. Or if you had marked lines on here, you could mark. Uh, match them to your marked line. I didn't use any lines. I used my creases. And so if you can see your crease there, you would line that up to your crease. And then you would hit the word set. Okay. So once you have the word set touched, you close it out and then you're ready to embroider. Now you would then run the first color stop which is going to stitch your placement line. Then we're going to place our piece of gray fabric right side up, making sure that we are covering all of that line. And I'm going to tack this down. Pinpoint placement makes working with striped or directional printed fabric much easier or less stressful uh, when embroidering with them because that, that's always a um, challenge. Always makes everybody hesitant. It's going to stitch around this twice to kind of give it good reinforcement. And again, your habit is going to be to want to immediately pick up a pair of scissors and trim this excess. Do not touch it. Okay? We need to leave the excess alone. So, once that is tacked down and held in place, we are going to start working through embroidering the machine base. Okay, so again, I'm still using Isocord color 138 for all of the dark gray of this particular design. Do I have any questions? Please don't hesitate to ask, drop them in the chat while the machine is running here.
Yes, I do have a picture of that. So my big thing with this project is I wasn't exactly sure I would really wear, I'm terrible at wearing an apron, first of all. I very rarely wear an apron when, I, when I'm in the kitchen, which is why half of my shirts are pretty much stained or ruined. So I wasn't 100% sure about making it and putting it on an apron. But I do have a picture of a customer that did her apron and actually added pockets. This apron is very long. It's a full long um, apron. And I have a picture at the end um, of it so that you can see. She used some of the uh, designs from the Bella Box on Creativity, one of the Creativity Bella Boxes for embroidering on the pockets. So I will show you that here at the end. I could see this put on to, oh, denim apron would be cute too. And again, if you liked the color of your background, like say that denim, and you didn't want to add fabric, but you still wanted the frame, just don't put fabric down here, okay? You could, I could easily have left just the stripe there, or if I had a colored apron and I wanted that to really show through, you could completely skip that um, this tack down and just run the design and then you could choose if you wanted to add the frame stitch that color stop or um, yes so do it with or without the frame so miss Susan yes in a new the newest version of pinpoint once you've hit the second point and you've hit set they both dots go back to being not yellow and you're pinpointed uh, you can just head out of the um the image so once you've hit your second point lined it up and you hit the word set and if both pinpoint placements are no longer yellow you're good to go i'm not sure the reason behind why they changed it but they did and it is a little confusing <laughs> for people because they think they did something wrong. All right. Once the fill stitch is done, we're going to go ahead and we are going to run the same color again. We are going to stitch a little outline. Okay. Around the outside edge, give it a little outline. And again, you could make this any color you wanted it to be. It doesn't have to be the same. I'm going to make it the same color. I am then going to change my thread color. Um, I am going to change my thread color to match the uh, sewing machine fabric, my applique for my sewing machine fabric when I go to do all of the next steps. Oh, yeah, you could totally leave the background off this, Miss Amy not necessary For my sewing machine, I am using, like again, this Ice Castle color, and I am going to use Ice Accord 4952 for all of the stitching related to the sewing machine. And I want to, sometimes I won't, when I'm appliquing, I won't necessarily um, change my tack down colors to match my fabrics. Um, it's just going to depend upon uh, what kind of stitching goes on the design. This is going to get a satin stitch. So if I wanted, I could have left it in the gray because it is going to get completely covered. But I typically only match my tack down fabric, my tack down threads to my top tack down thread color to my fabric color when I'm going to be using a decorative stitch to hold things down 
versus the satin stitch, but this design is all satin stitch. Okay, so placement line done. I'm gonna take my fabric, place it right side up. We're gonna tack it down. And then we are gonna trim it. So I'm going to take my hoop off the machine, I'm going to lay it here and I'm going to carefully trim around the edge. Once you have your fabric trimmed, we're going to carefully put our hoop back on the machine. We're going to verify that none of our straps or tabs or anything are caught underneath of our hoop. Everything is free and clear. And we're going to start working through embroidering details. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be satin stitching our sewing machine. Then I'm going to change to white thread to stitch detail one. I'm going to go back to that dark gray 138. Okay. And then I'm going to go and we're going to fill in the uh, thread. When, I, when we get to that, I will tell you what thread color. Because I'm still trying to decide on what thread color I want for that thread. I'm just using plain white for the machine detail. The apron blanks that are we have from Kimberbell are on sale. Um, this month. So they're 10% off. Both the um, plain white and the pinstripe. So yeah, there's a lot of versatility with this design. You can leave things off, you can add things to it. Good morning, and if you're just joining us or you're new here, welcome. My name is Amy at Material Girls here in Maryland. And we are working through the September um, Kimberbell Dealer Design Exclusive Design. Okay, 
for the month. It's the I Like to Party design. Information I just posted here in the chat on where to find the design or all the information can also be found in the video detail as well. So we're working through the Um, yes, depending on the model machine, so Gina asked if there was, um, if she can add to it or take things away from it without software, yes. So depending on the machine that you have, um, in the newer model Berninas that are the plus machines, you do have the ability to ungroup, so you could easily ungroup the design and delete portions that you don't want. And things along that lines, you can always change thread colors. The machine could care less what color you have in um, there as well. And then you can't really change a word in there, anything like that, because this is their, their font that they've digitized. It's not, you really can't um, necessarily recreate it, but you could delete and replace um, with with fonts that are on your machines. I would be careful um, taking them too small, so you may want to test it before you jump right into your project, especially if you've made, um, you've shrunk the font any in the design. All right, I'm switching over to white. I'm gonna stitch the little dials and details. but you could easily skip bits and pieces of the design as well. So you could leave off the words, leave out the outline, just use just the sewing machine if you wanted. You could find a design that was similar in size. Um, do a little flip-flopping if you didn't have software and moving the design so you could come in stitch the applique, the base down. You could then stitch the words and then open the design that you want to put here and then stitch the design. You have to do a little bit of placement playing to make sure that it, you know, fits with inside of there. But yes, you can, you can do a lot without having software. Now, once the design is the white here is finished we are going to go back to that 138 isocord to stitch the little details Everybody have a nice holiday weekend. Certainly hope so. I didn't work all weekend. Well, worked outside on store stuff for a little bit until the sun got too bright and couldn't see the computer screen anymore. Somebody needs to create me a, a way to be able to work on the computer in bright sunlight. <laughs> just took it as my, when the sun got too bright and I couldn't see the computer screen anymore, I, t I took that as my hint that it was time to stop working. I was talking to a friend and, and they were like, how do I know you've been outside and not working? And I said, it's because now I have an arm tan. <laughs> so my watch tan is proof that I did sit in the sunshine this weekend. <laughs> yeah, Monday was, I did not, we actually came to work yesterday because it wasn't a pretty day. So I picked, I went ahead and 
came down and did some prepping with all the Labor Day orders. Thank you for everybody who placed an order and showed us some support. It's greatly appreciated. We got everything started prepping all those orders and everything, pulling them and cutting and so that we could be ready to take things to the post office this morning. I did some cleaning. We had three pallets of Bernina machines show up um, at the end of last week, so I kind of needed to get them out of the middle of the sales floor so we didn't trip over them. So did some heavy lifting and some exercise while we uh, were here yesterday. Turned the radio on real loud, had my own little dance party. And then today it's super gray and well, it was rainy when I came back to the studio. Well, it looks like it stopped. Now, when the this portion of the design is finished, the next color stop is there are two colors that it calls for. There's a light color that is kind of used as the base. And then there is an, an accent or a darker color that's used for um, on top of it as well as the little thread tails. So for my light color, I'm actually gonna make it yellow just like it shows in the picture. I am going to use um, Isocord 660. And then for the thread detail color, I'm going to use Isocord 640. So we shall see what it looks like. I'll be your guinea pig. my fingernails all this week. Now I can't seem to grab a hold of any of the thread. Okay. All right. To my lighter yellow color. Again, the Isocord 660. So we're going to stitch that. No, I think the sweetest pie bench pillow um, should the kits should be arriving today. I did not track them this morning, but they should be here hopefully today, and everybody will receive some notices as well that those are here. It's exciting. And then if you were part of Fall Harvest Table Topper, uh, the Fall Harvest event, Kimberbell event your requested additional requested blanks of napkins and table runners have arrived as well this week will be arriving this week all right i've changed over to isocord um, 640 darker yellow shade to stitch um, accents on top of that lighter as well as the little pieces of thread Once our thread detail is done, then it stitches the, I'm going to leave the same color in to stitch the top 
of the spool. Um, as of right now, they are, I may be able to get my hands on more of them. I did order extra of each. Um, I do believe I have extras of each coming. I'll, I'll guarantee that um, once they all get here and I can verify color, I mean verify count. There may become more available later and I may be able to get my hands on more. Right now they're just because of the, you know, shipping world and things along that lines, they're, they are limited so that they can have enough for um, all the events, just to be able to make the kits for the events, not even just the extras, just for kits. So I'll try to get, if I need more, I will see if I can't get some more for you. Okay. Now, once our spool is finished, next up is the color for your pin cushion. And I'm going to go a little lighter pink than the coral that was used. And so 2155 is the pink that I have chosen for the top of my pin cushion. And then once our pin cushion is done, I'm going to go back to that 138 gray color. I'm going to stitch the base of my pin cushion as well as the pins. And then I'm going to also go ahead and stitch the words as well, all in that same 138 isochord. Back to 138 for the rest of our color stops. Everything for me. Now you can feel free to make these different colors, make your letters different, your project, your apron, your patch. I'm going to stay with the same gray. Okay. Stitch my pins.
Okay, now that our little pins are stitched, we're going to um, stitch out wording. So I'm going to leave it in the gray. Feel free to make it whatever color you'd like. Now, once our words are finished, this is well. This is where we will need to then trim. Okay, so don't get pushed happy with the machine start button because we need to do trimming. After our words are stitched, we will trim the excess fabric. Then we will stitch the label satin outline. Okay, so just. Don't forget, once words are done, to stitch around. Oh, I know, Miss Amy, thank you so much. You got some pretty fabrics. I cut them all yesterday, and they'll be, they're already on the way to the post office this morning. Does Kimberbell announce what they're going to do next year? Um, I feel like next week I will hear something. If you've not been with Material Girls for a few years or you're new, uh, we will have a demo December this year. Kimberbell always, done, always does a demo December. And it's a, typically it's an in-person thing. You come to a demo, you get a stamp and you get a portion of something. And then at the end of, I think it's three or four weeks, you'll have all the pieces you need for a um, project, it's a really cute project. Um, so they'll be start. They'll be announcing that here next week as well. I do believe that the um, dealer exclusives will continue on in this format next year. I don't know. I'm I'm assuming. We shall see what they have up their sleeves. Lots of things. Um, if you've been around a while in the world of Kimberbell, uh, one of the first things that she ever did before she actually was doing embroidery was a she published a book called Kimberbell Cuties, um, and it was all traditional piecing and applique. She then later came out with the embroidery design collection that coordinated with Kimberbell Cuties that would allow you to embroider the corners of those runners versus um, appliquing them by traditional blanket stitch. So the book is written um, with the intent of you doing this by machine blanket stitch, you know, fusible, um, basically trace, cut, fuse down and then stitch around. Um, later she came out with a design collection that would allow you to embroider those corners versus uh, doing them traditionally. And then she has announced um, volume two of Kimberbell Cuties. And I believe in that one, from what I can tell, uh, information will be coming uh, next week is that all the centers of those are um, pieced in the hoop and instead of traditional piecing with applique. So watch for that. We will be doing monthly kits. I was going to do these as monthly kits and I probably will end up doing both book one and book two as well. So that will be coming soon. Miss Debbie, yes, we will be teaching um, North Pole Tier Tray. We will have a virtual event um, for that as well. So just how we do our virtual events. Um, we basically, I record videos for every single project. And with um, North Pole Tier Tray, there's 12 projects in that event. So we are going to film all the 
projects. One second. Here they all are. <laughs> um, get those filmed for you. We will load them up and then you'll get emails from us when you register for class virtually. You'll get an email telling you thread colors, stabilizers, all that kind of thing, what hoop sizes and things like that. And then we will send you a link to videos, the videos on the 26th of October. Okay, and then you have access to those videos for whenever you want to work on them. So they don't have to be something that you do within a time frame. If you're not into doing Christmas at the end of October, you can wait till you have a few days and you'll have access to those videos for basically a lifetime. And that will be launching at the end of October. So Halloween weekend, we're going to be working on Christmas at Material Girls. Oh, you're very welcome, Miss Amy. And we're actually in um, going to be working on even more of a um, digital presence and even working on classes that virtual classes that you can purchase and take at your convenience because I know I have a lot of gals across the country now and so taking a class on Eastern Standard Time is a little hard to fit in your schedule if you're on West Coast time or Mountain Standard Time so we are working on more things um, if there was just more time in the day Oh, you're very welcome, Miss Debbie. Anytime. Any questions, I'm happy to explain. And sometimes things <laughs> don't work. And we just know everybody is um, busy. And weekends are busy and, and times like that. So I don't like to um, lock you into, well, if you can't make it, then you can't participate. You know what? I'm all for everybody's schedule is different. So we leave the videos there for you to be able to access them whenever you want. If it's next January before you can do the virtual event, it's next January. The only thing with virtual events that is time sensitive is if you want to earn the bonus CD. So with that as well, the bonus CDs, um, basically a hundred dollar purchase in Kimberbell product and then you earn that bonus. So that purchase has to be made um, online that weekend basically in order to earn the bonus CD because those have to go back to Kimberbell but other than that you can do the projects whenever maybe you do them now and in three months you're like you know what I want to make another one but I don't remember how to do it the video will be there oh yes <laughs> you're very welcome thank you guys I'm trying we are working hard trying to make everybody happy with all the things. So what classes do you want to see? We're always asking. I know that a lot of things, I haven't done a lot of the Kimberbell stuff because Kim does a lot of that, like for Cup of Cheer, for example. Um, Kim does a lot of that on her Facebook groups and her groups, so I'm not sure um, if you want to take a physical class with that or a virtual class doing cup of cheer or doing sweet as pie because she's done that for the most part no um, I haven't watched many of them I haven't watched don't watch them all the way through but if there is embroidery design classes collections or if there's quilting whatever please feel free to let me know what kind of classes you are wanting because I'm looking for topics. <laughs> I already knew that answer, Gina. Oh, 
you're welcome, Miss Indy. That's why I, although I didn't, maybe not did the best job this morning at Pinpoint, but I do have lots of videos up. Uh, the Mastery Series is up on Pinpoint as well. And um, Miss Betty, this, um, I'm probably going to start in January. I hadn't decided. I kept wanting to do it and wanting to do it, and I just think now we're getting into the holiday season, and I think everybody's busy. But if that's different, let me know, and I will gladly put it on sooner to do wave pool. I just don't want you to get behind at creating, at working on the project. Do you want a physical class or would you just like me to record the little lesson on how to um, do the block or the conversion? Maybe that. And then you could do it at your convenience. Oh, thank you, Miss Debbie. Yeah, I like to make sure that you all use your machines or can at least use the tools in maybe ways that they weren't or weren't intended or we forget that are there. And so that's, I really take pride in making sure that you can use all your Bernina. Okay, we're slowly coming along here. Don't recommend putting your hands in the machine while the machine is running, but you know, I like this is my this is my version of living dangerously. I don't want to jinx myself, but this is like some of the nicest embroidered lettering from Kimberbell in a while. Okay, that's what I thought, Miss Betty, because for the most part, for the most part on that wave pool project, it's basic piecing. Um, there's nothing, it's half square triangles, flying geese, things along that line. And so really what we want is, I know you guys want how I converted the project from, um, non accu quilt to accu quilt and so i figured once i gave you that information again you may have something better to do with your saturday than to be locked into a class where you have made a thousand half square triangles before you just want the info and so i think what we'll do i'll probably end up doing for that project is a virtual um maybe monthly series for those for that type of class and then you can do it I have night owls and I have morning people and then I've got gals that still work and and all that it's very 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 difficult to uh, make everyone happy but this seems to be the the best way at the moment oh you're welcome miss Amy I'm working on more software videos
So cup of, yeah, cup of cheer is a big request, but um, it's a big project. And so I'm thinking that maybe at this point, I'm not sure unless you really very strictly focused um, cup of cheer and like really, really focused on it. You could have it finished before the end of the year. Before Christmas started, you started counting down to Christmas um, time. So <coughs> it may be a 2023 project for the store. And I may break it out into another virtual. It may become part of my awesome embroidery Wednesdays. Awesome, em what, what did we call it? Awesome Wednesday embroidery, my YouTube series that will start up in January. I know I originally said it start in the fall, but ain't gonna happen. So maybe Cup of Cheer will be kind of my first project. So it's a free little weekly series. We'll kind of break the quilt down into techniques or into sections, and I'll walk you through all my tips and tricks for it. Lots of options. And goodness knows whatever else comes up this year, next year, comes out. I know Kimberbell Cuties. I was planning on teaching volume one again because we have a lot of new Kimberbell. Oh, thank you. Awesome, it went awesome Wednesday embroidery with Amy. Thank you. See, I don't even know the names of my own programs. But so we'll see. We're coming into what we call in the quilt store world. Um, and you'll probably, you know, Quilt Festival that takes place in Houston every year in October, November. Um, so prior to Quilt Festival is Quilt Market. And that's where everybody releases um, or shows their new stuff for basically the last half and the beginning half of, the, of next year. And so you're going to start seeing um, the pattern designers and fabric companies and embroidery design collections and things like that are going to start sharing some of the new things. And so everybody is kicking off that push for um, things. I know Annie's working on her new patterns. All right, last word here. I know Kimberbell is working on what they'll release at that market. Shall be interesting. All right, I will put Cup of Cheer on the list. If I do it, we'll all have Cup of Cheer quilts for next Christmas countdown. I do have Stripology rulers, Miss Indy. They, um, let's see which ones I have. I don't see them up online, but I do have them. I will have to go look and see. I think I have the original, which is the big one, but I know that they make the smaller, they make a mini and they make a square, Stripology squared, Stripology and then Stripology mini. I just may not have it up online because that's not something I want to ship all the time, the biggest one, because it is a little challenging. All right. Words are finished. Yeah, I love my Stripology ruler. <clears throat> love it, love it, love it. And we will be doing uh, classes with that book as well. I, my Stripology club will come back. All right, we're going to take the hoop off the machine here. I'm going to, one second, <coughs> dig this thread tail out. We're going to very carefully trim around the edge um, <coughs> of our fabric here as close as we can. 
For large areas like this, I like my duckbill scissors. Okay, yeah, the XL. So we have the, the XL is um, the one that I like. So the XL combines the squared and the traditional. And then the mini is great for like uh, squaring up smaller blocks, things along that lines, uh, fat quarters, trimming fat quarters and things. Anything you can do with those, the mini or the squared, you can do with the XL. All trimmed. Ooh, that got a little close. Sorry about that. All trimmed. We're going to return this to the machine. We're going to stitch the last color stop, which is our satin stitch. Okay. I'm going to leave that same 138 gray in. We're going to stitch. Now, when it gets to a point here, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to point out a section to you so that you can kind of have an idea, a little tip. What the, system, what the machine is doing right now one second, let's, is it's laying down the basically the two sides of your satin stitch. Okay. So it's laying down the foundation for basically the left and the right needle penetration. Now it's going through and it is running a underlay or a zigzag around the edge between those two straight stitches that it just did. If you watch your satin stitch, anything that is sticking outside of this zigzag or outside that line, that last outer edge of straight stitch, if there is any fabric or thread or anything sticking out, you are going to see it. It's going to be visible outside of the um, satin stitch. So when it gets to a point like right here, when it gets all the way back around, if I have anything that maybe didn't get trimmed close enough sticking out of the edge, I would stop the machine and then take the hoop off the machine. Don't take your project out. Take the hoop off the machine and trim it a little bit closer, okay? Even if, you know, sometimes you may have a little thread, uh, thread or a little fabric fray, you could easily kind of take a pair of tweezers and get in there and pull at it. So everything here is clean, which means that when I satin stitch is stitched here, I'll have a nice clean edge and there won't be any uh, frayed fabric or fabric sticking out from underneath the satin stitch. Oh, Miss Sue, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yes, you could. Miss Indy, Miss Indy asked if there was some time of um, stain prevention. You could easily scotch guard this once it was embroidered if you wanted. Very easily scotch guard it. A little bit of scotch guard stain resistant spray. We're on 
on the downhill, coming around the corner. Our design is almost finished. Yeah, they keep finding threads. I know, and you're probably thinking, Amy, how many different pair of scissors can you pick up today? <laughs> Half my problem is, is I lay them down and I can't find them, and then I have to just grab a pair of scissors that are closest. I have hundreds, hundreds of scissors. I'm a collector. Well, one, I, everybody always, you know, you got to try it to see if it's good, you know, especially if it's claiming to be, you know, to rock your world or be the best pair of scissors you've ever had. So. For a double curved scissor, I don't have a, a huge preference, to be honest. I just grab kind of whatever I've got. I do like my pickle pie scissors. Let me change. I do like my pickle pie. Okay. I like one. I like that they're pink. I like how long this is. I wish these were a little bit smaller, but they're not too, too terribly large. But I like how big this curve is and how much this curve curves up. For a smaller pair of double curve, I just usually, I usually use a lot of single curve scissors to be honest. So most of my scissors are like one curve and then they sit flat, okay? But the double what makes it a double curve if you don't know is here's curve one and then curve two is the tip of the um tip of the scissor let me get i can get my words right so you can see this one curves up at the end and this one stays flat okay so in the same um these have these this is a new pair from OESD the in the two OESD toolkit this one has a curve to it again it's not it looks flush but there is a, a tip up if I'm trimming applique in the hoop I actually prefer my scissors to sit flat against the fabric if I'm trimming I like these if I'm trimming um, the double curve if I'm trimming um, thread tails, things like that. Maybe if I'm trimming a fabric on top of a fabric. Again, it's kind of whatever pair of scissors is, is laying around. I don't have a pair that I constantly go back to. Um, but those are my preferred. I don't do... If I am trimming threads, I like my little squizzers. And I really like the ones that have this little hook on it. So you can hook underneath the thread jump and clip it. So that little hook will hold on to the thread tail. Kind of uses the, and I always use a pair of tweezers as well. So this is, this, this tool here takes these two and replaces it with one tool. Because usually I would hold up my thread tail and clip. Because if you hold, okay. Here's, here we go. Here's a tip for you. If you're clipping jump threads and you're like, you still see those little tiny fuzzies that are on top of your um, thread, on top of your embroidery, right? Sometimes you just couldn't get close enough to it. And so that's what happens is you've clipped it, but you've not really clipped it enough for it to hide. So if you take your tweezers and you hold onto the thread tail taut, and then clip it, usually you've created enough kind of springy action or pull or resistance that when you clip it, it kind of pops back in or you've, you've been, you were able to 
to pull it up high enough that when you clipped it, the what remains will um, disappear behind the thread that's there versus be on top, if that makes sense. <laughs> the science of clipping thread tails in embroidery. <laughs> When our design is finished, we are going to take it out of the hoop. When our design is done and you know it's finished by on your machines, it either tells you the design is done, there's a check mark, there's the checkered flag. Make sure that you don't remove your project before you see those indicators telling you the design is finished. And I say that only because sometimes when designers do satin stitch, they'll come back with that decorative stitch, that straight stitch that stitches right in the middle of the satin to kind of give it a little bit of a, a pizzazzier look. And so by doing that, um, sometimes we forget, we just see satin stitch, oh, it's done, and then we pop it off. So always make sure you look at your screen. Look at that. Look at that pinpoint right there. That sits right on the same edge of that stripe. Yay, I love it. Okay. Gonna take our project out of the hoop here. Loosen this screw. We're gonna trim the excess stabilizer away from our project. Okay. And typically, most of you would probably take it and you'd do this and then you'd cut. What happens if you do it this way is that you really can't see your garment on the underside and that's where scissors end up clipping holes in things. So you should always trim your excess stabilizer from the top, okay? So you can do a couple of things. You can either be really brave and use a rotary cutter. I only use a rotary cutter because this is a fairly large <laughs> area, but otherwise I would use my scissors and trim. And this way I can see my actual embroidered item and I'm not accidentally blindly clipping a hole into it. Okay. All right. Trim up any threads and there is your design. Now, on the back, always looks like a hot mess. If you want to trim some of these, you can. You don't want to trim your long tails, any or any of your tails, shorter than about an eighth of an inch. Because if you clip too close to this, you will clip the knots that are holding all your threads in, okay? The other thing that you can do is to use some gentle touch. And so after I wash this, I will apply gentle touch to it. So I'm gonna take this home, I'm gonna throw it in the washing machine, cool water, and dissolve all this excess stabilizer. This is a fusible 
okay? Um, interfa not interfacing, it's like a trico that I will cut a piece and I'll fuse it on top. I always round the corners, so I'm almost gonna cut it to look just like this label here, a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna iron that. That's going to cover up all my thread tails, okay? It's also going to not be scratchy or itchy, not that I am not gonna wear this apron without clothes on, but you know, some people. So this, I will trim and iron it to the back side. It's just gonna secure everything for me and be nice and pretty, a little less um, hot mess on the back. And that is your I like to party apron. Okay, so let me show you what other things. So I always look for ideas. So here on the left in this image is what Miss Kathy, a customer did, that um, she took her apron. Now this apron is 40 inches long, okay, like I said. And it is very long for some, in, even for some of you. And she cut it off to the length that she wanted and then used the excess to create pockets. So she created the pocket, the strip, okay, embroidered in them. And those are, those designs came out of the one Bella box that was all about creativity. Okay. And then basically hemmed the top. Now, if you're really good, okay, so let me show you. So if you take, here's my apron, okay? It was all the way down there. If you cut this off at the length that you want, this end is already hemmed. This can become the top of your apron pocket, okay? And then you can split your pocket into divisions, embroider um, where you want them embroidered or leave them blank then place it right sides together with the apron stitch around the two sides and the bottom and then turn it right side out flip it right side out and then stitch down your pocket divisions and so you can see here on miss kathy's she used like a fairly white background she's got a pink sewing machine um, for you there as well and then her little bow at the top is, an, is a lanyard left from a um, Kimberbell event because every time you come to a Kimberbell event or register for a virtual event, you get a lanyard for your name tag. And she cuts them off and uses them for, cuts them up and uses them where it calls for ribbon or strapping or things along that line. All right. Well, that is your apron. And your, oops, wrong button. There we go. There he is. Maybe I'll wear it today. <laughs> now, in October, coming October 1st, and next month's project will be this little handbag. Uh, in the hoop, two sizes. We will have kits for this project for you. Um, when we do the kits for this project, we will do them in the largest size. So the largest size would be a 6 by 10 embroidery field. And that, or the one to the left of that image, is 5 by 7. There will be a little bit of prep work <coughs> for uh, this project uh, next month if you want to make it. You have to make this strap, okay, prior because we need this little piece for the D-rings prior to starting the embroidery, okay? So I will um, put all that information out there and in the description once we get everything launched for it. Well, I had a few more days. Uh, before I need to get that together. But just so you know, that will be coming October 1st. The design will be up for pre-order later, later today on our website. If you are not already part of our um, yearly membership group, which gets all of the designs on the first of the month, you can pre-order the design and Oct on October 1st. 
usually by about one o'clock. The designs are in your Kimberbell uh, download folder in on Kimberbell's website. So if, I'm sure you've purchased things from there and it's up there for you. And then I usually the first Tuesday of the month, we embroider it together. Or you can watch me and embroider it later if you want. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope that you have a fantastic day. I look forward to seeing your finished projects. So sh be sure to um, share them with us here on social media. I, I believe it's all around here, uh, Facebook, and we have Instagram, as well as make sure that you like and subscribe everywhere. And we will see you all real soon. Thank you guys for joining me today and we'll see you next month.